I'm uh, speaking with Mike Capizzola, a stand-up comedian and cartoonist. Mike will be performing at the Comedy Underground in Seattle on Sunday, June 14th. Um, he'll be putting on a multimedia comedy show entitled Emperor Ming's Mercilessly Spicy Wings and Other Tales. Mike, let's start with the title for your show. Most people younger than 40, maybe even 50, will have no idea uh, what Flash Gordon is the, or the comic strip or the movies from the 1930s. Uh, what does the title say about you? It says that I'm, that I'm okay to, uh, to lure in uh, somewhere between three and six people at any given show <laughs> by using something this obscure. <laughs> well, or is it that you want to... Uh, uh, get people to, to look it up. Then, uh, do, you, do you want to educate people about it? Are you are you a hardcore Flash Gordon fan, or is it more like just an obscure, random thing? I'll tell you something, Henry. Not only is it an, an obscure uh, idea for the title, but he doesn't even make a single appearance in the entire show, which I thought was, to me, very funny. Um, you know, there's a wonderful comic strip by uh, Nicholas Gerwich. It's called The Perry Bible Fellowship. Do you, do you know it? I do. <laughs> His book is called The Colonel of Trial Suizo and Other Stories. And there's like, I don't know, 200 amazing strips in this book. Each one is drawn differently, and they're very funny. Colonel Suizo appears in one single strip on half a page. You know, there's two strips on a page. This is one, this occupies one half of one page in the entire book. And I thought it was such a funny funny nod, you know, almost like a, a, a private joke that the, that the crowd kind of slowly warms to, like, wait a sec, he's a plant, or, oh my god, he's not a guitarist after all, this is a, it's Bono, or, you know, it's just, I was fine with using this as the kind of, uh, you must be this tall to ride the ride, like, the people that got it would laugh, and I think want to see the show, that's my... Yeah, uh, that's my that's my idea. Whether or not it works, we'll see. Well, um, it's a show that would uh, and well, the word geek now is, is so uh, in, well embraced, over embraced. It's, it's it's like I don't know what's going to happen to the word geek but if it's going to become uh, toxic at some point. But right now, people love the word geek, so this is geek friendly, and uh, you, you're covering uh, science fiction and uh, zombies and all sorts of pop culture stuff. So I, I guess that the title is really does fit in. People can just. Uh, go can run yeah. with it. It's kind of a love letter to imagination, and um, but I, I like what you said about the the word nerd or geek. And this is kind of it's, it does bother me on so, some level that the the word is is uh, it's been so bastardized and cheapened, and, and so many of us had to fight for it. Where you know, in my youth, I couldn't name a single athlete but i knew i mean i could know like any you know richie jackson was in the news so like yeah. i knew who richie jackson was but i knew all the apollo astronauts by name i knew the missions they flew what dates they flew what the goals of the mission were launch dates splashed down the, the carriers that picked them up from the ocean like they, they were my heroes i didn't care although i did find pro wrestling very very funny and i watched i watched the you know wwf as a kid but and this was a, you know, if there's nerd cred, it's hard earned. It's like today they just like, it's just like uh, they're throwing on a costume or something like that. Uh, well, you know, you know how they say never kid a kid or you never uh, throw out an idea of a cartoonist to another cartoonist. Because I, I, I see the wheels moving and you're like, hmm, geek, let's, let's play with this. I, and it's so true, too. I mean, it's, it's like a pet peeve thing. Because I... It, it, uh, it's been co commercialized to the point where it's yeah. like, uh, it is getting toxic, and uh, I, I, I could go on about it because there are uh, people with deep pockets who are, are just uh, driving it into the ground. Yeah, it, 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 it's it's weird how big it is right now. Like I, I worry for uh, you know content creators who are you know completely DIY, whose ideas are probably just going to get sucked up and exploited. You know, at a, at a, you know, the people trolling through conventions for oh, networks yeah. looking for ideas. And it's just, it's bothersome where it's like, it's so, you know, take Big Bang Theory, everything about that show sucks. And it looks so calculated. I know it's huge, mm -hmm. but I feel like, you know, it's the job of the underdog to, to take on the powerful where, you know. Oh, well, well, check this out. This That show was never going to make it. But it, it, uh, 
Uh, it, uh, it was marketing that stepped in, and then I'm sure all the actors on that show are going, Jesus, I, I don't believe it. We're a hit. I mean, I, I think yeah. it's a heavy marketing, and it really uh, revved yeah. up the, the geek. Uh, and, I mean, to their credit, I guess it's marketing yeah. genius. And the show yeah, occasionally seems, uh, is funny. So It seemed contrived the way... I mean, I, I, I usually have really good instincts. Like, the only time I was wrong, I was really wrong about Friends. So I was like, this show sucks. It'll last 11 episodes, that kind of thing. But because I, I was really like, nobody's going to be fooled. All they did was all they did was take Melrose Place and add funniness like Seinfeld. All it is is just Melrose. It's, you know, b- beautiful people saying funny stuff. No one no one's fooled. It's simply taking the, the excitement of Seinfeld and, and how popular Melrose Place was and just putting them in a blender. No one's going to buy this shit. And then all of a sudden, you know, not only was it huge, it was really huge, and it endured, and it was not a bad show. No, I, I think, it, to their credit, they, they, they were self-aware of what they were doing, and, I mean, you've got some pretty talented people in that show, and so... Sure, it was just the genesis of it that I found a little right. uh, specious, where I was like, come on, this, it was just a blender of... I just don't like seeing things that are so obviously a rip-off. Like the moment Walking Dead became big, there were other post-apocalyptic tales that they found a way to get around the Z word, and they, oh, it's something else, you know? Like, right. Uh, hey, what can we get, do to get back on track and exploit my show? What, okay, where, where well, do we go, where this, do we go this whole wrong? thing is about you. The whole thing's about you, baby, one way or another. Um, no, that's fun. You know, because I had written down uh, something, and then we got onto geek, which is just spontaneous. I was going to say, well, let's. I'll go ahead and ask you my my prepared question. Uh, let's walk through the anatomy of a cartoon, Mike. Uh, sure. Could you uh, 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 break down the, the how how a cartoon uh, is uh, is created? As an example, uh, w- running wild with a with a pet peeve, and for me, and this is genuine. Uh, leaf blowers are a pet peeve, and I. I think rakes are the only way to go. I mean, there's no need for the leaf blowers. I think they're getting off on leaf blowing because it's there's no need for it. And so there's a cartoon. It's just um, the, the cauldron is boiling, isn't it? Is, is, is that uh, a good you, example? I, I, uh, it depends on, on on how big of a field you have to take care of. You know, like I raked leaves. That was it. Was just a you know I grew up in a, a suburban town and that was okay. the fact of life. Leaves fell and that was your Saturday. Like rake, 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 oh, rake. Sure. I mean, when the Walkman came out. That was I. I minded it a little less because I could go out there and I'd have you know ZZ Top for forty five minutes. So that was just like okay, I've got ZZ Top with me instead of just like cursing and raking. And this sucks. I wish I was doing something else. Yeah, I wish I was drawing. You know, so at least I had the Walkman. But I, you know, the leaf blower to me would have been like all done. What's next? <laughs> Oh, well, sure. Well, that, that's a real honest job there. I'm, I'm talking about an uh, urban leaf blowing, but it's like a little tiny pile. You don't need yeah. a leaf blower. You really don't. Because I, I live in yeah. a very urban neighborhood, and we've got these leaf blower guys. They go into town with it, and it's just, they're very loud, and it's very distracting. It's noise pollution. It, it messes with my quality of life. But um, let me ask what? you, would it be fun for you to... Um, to describe your, your show that you're doing in Seattle, and is this the first time you've done this particular show, or what's what's the genesis behind this this particular format you're doing right now? Well, I haven't done it in a uh, a comedy club before. I've done it in theater, uh, a couple uh, spaces, like uh, you know, movie theater, two movie theaters. Um, I've done it uh, for 826 Valencia, which is a uh, nonprofit learning center in San Francisco. They have a wonderful space. They have 826 LA, 826 New York, it's, and all over the country. I did it as a uh, they want they brought me to do it as kind of a thank you for the volunteer staff. Um, and that they're a great organization who pretty much seeks to transform the lives of these kids through writing, underserved schools, teaching them to write, write stories, use their imaginations. It's a great great uh, organization and I volunteer there as a cartoonist to supplement the stories with cartoon art. Very cool. Um, so that was a fun time to do it. And, you know, these were people who got it and uh, appreciated, you know, the, the content, Star Wars, zombies, things like that. Um, the story in one form, the, the show in one form or another has evolved over the years from stand-up where I wanted to add visuals, but in comedy clubs it's just too much of a production to, like, uh, set up just to show five slides in the middle of a half-hour set. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's too much effort, but this was, uh, I, I wanted to blend them somehow. I, I, I do a lot of stuff for the Cartoon Art Museum in San Francisco, and we had this fun James Bond event with author Alan J. Porter, who wrote the illustrated history of James Bond, and I mm-hmm. did a slideshow before he was there, uh, before he came on to discuss his book and, and, and the illustrated history of Bond, and we 
you know, we had like prizes and a slideshow and a James Bond quiz, and I had a lot of my Bond material, and also I had drawings going back to second grade, things that I did oh, wow. in my school notebooks, and I wanted to, you know, and, and 